Every generation needs a revolution, Jimmy. The American dream is just that. Just a dream. War is a continuation of politics. Only by other means. Politics is a continuation of economics by other means. This is our bank. This is our war. And this is our plan of attack. Banks have become an essential threat to our democracy. So consider this justice. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the Internet. Please help support this station so this battle can continue forward. Revolution Radio! The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... Sanity runs in my family. Practically gallops. No stems, no seeds that you don't need. Aquifers of gold is. This is James, the most acid I've ever seen anybody eat in my life. Wow! Oh, man! Why don't you get a job, Mr. Coley? What for? You need money. Oh, all I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. Welcome and thanks for tuning in to Revolution Radio. And now it's time for that feral hippie herself, an infotartic, esoteric, eclectic mix of the adventures of that feral hippie, Miss Mona Radler. What are you people? On dope? That was my skull! I'm so wasted! Make a move and the money gets it. Same guy here. All right, money, it's all yours. Take it away. Do, 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 do. Welcome to freedomslips.com, revolution.radio, and Haggy Shack. Oh, please, don't forget where. Oh, it's the first rabbit, rabbit. <laughs> Bring those dollars in. Don't forget we're listener supported and we only have 28 days this month. So please, let's do the homepage and check out the seed packs and the archives and the bullet drive and, you know, keep us on air. We got vital information to expose. So please help me join. Um, welcome my guest, Bridget, with conscious, okay, economics. Okay, I'm probably not. Yeah, Consciousness of Economics. <laughs> Welcome, Bridget. Welcome. I am excited to be here today. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it would have come any time earlier than the um, full moon, you know, uh, super eclipse, the three weeks up to that date were like crazy. People were nuts. My life was nuts. And then it just pops and everything starts to settle down. Oh, way cool. <laughs> So you've been organizing, you've been readjusting things, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I was lucky. The only thing that actually, you know, went completely down was a website that I just built for my classes and workshops. I mean, literally got up the next morning or the morning of the super full moon and it was gone. Like it didn't even have a domain name. So, but that's good. You know what? It wasn't me. It didn't hurt me physically, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, no doubt there, because I'm sure you've had a few of those occurrences, right? Yeah, in the past. Yeah, where you get, like, sort of wiped out. 
So I like anything else other than me to be wiped out. And my dog. We don't like her getting wiped out either. No, she babies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's a good girl. Well, the last conversation we had was really good, but I think you said you wanted to expose or do something different a little bit. Well, I want to be able to talk to people more about health um, because we have like, okay, so we have like three operating, well, there's the original system that was designed, you know, that came with the planet. Right. And then there was, you know, another system that overrode that. And then we have another system that's overrode that. So. All in know, the earth realm of the same system? You think like the harmonic convergence or the Schumann residence has been changing? Is that what you're kind of like grabbing at? No, but the. So the. The original program of the planet is a computer system, right? It's a, it's like, it's exactly like a computer system. When I was down in Taos, New Mexico, um, and I would go visit the Taos people and, and talk to them, you know, their, their direct thing is that they believe that um, even, you know, the creator, they consider the creator like the computer in the sky. And if people read any of Black Elk's information, you know, Black Elk kind of viewed it the same way, you know, that he was, a, he, had, he had a rope attached to him that would connect into the great computer where all information was. And that's, that's the clear, that's the clear operating system. So when the planet was originally designed, um, and this is a lot of different belief systems that come in um, to this original, traditional, uh, you know, belief systems that come into this planet, it was a the planet was going to be a cooperative, a library. So all the plants from all different kinds of other planets were brought here. Uh, you know, there was nothing here. It was zero. It was like a void. Um, and one of my teachers talks about the seven nations that originally came here. Um, and each one brought the energy or let's say um, a, a computer operating system so that you know, this ball could turn into something, right? So each each one brought a different type of system. Um, the plant people or the green nation um, brought all the plants, the trees, um, and all of those um, kinds of uh, beings that are on this planet. So all these systems and all these different beings were here like before us. Then the second system comes in. Oh, and there was going to be a big library, which would have been like a holographic library, because somehow the Earth was like in the center of a lot of different kinds of uh, freeways going to different planets, different universes, different galac galaxies. So it was really thought out, this whole Earth kind of situation, that it would just have everything you could possibly have on it. It would start out that way. So anybody that needed to come, say they needed to re-terraform a planet, could actually come here and collect whatever they needed to help terraform them, right? And then take it back to their planet. There would well, have been they like could have clued us in. <laughs> <laughs> well, thing is, we've been lied to. I know, so. right? Received. <laughs> yeah, we were told the truth. You don't need it. Oh, it. But it, you know, it's so far gone that. Oh, I don't even I, want to. Think it's like, only it's only a few people that kind of, you know. There's only a few original people left on the earth that know this kind of stuff or know this kind of information that still hold the oral history mm -hmm. and never really wrote it down so that it couldn't be burned and destroyed. It was still passed on, you know, traditional oral history. So anyway, there would have been this holographic um, giant library that every culture, race. ET, human, multidimensional uh, beings could actually put into this computer system about their planet, what kind of being they are, uh, what kind of genetics they have, how they travel, what their area has to offer, so that um, everybody could know lots of different things about Is each that other. like the Akashic Records? You know what? I'm not really sure. I know people that deal in the Akashic Records. And this is the deal. I think the Akashic Records is a lower form of knowledge. Okay. Um, and that's the problem. Most of the things that people believe in in this planet or they attach like a name or category to, 
Um, they put too much evidence on to where they well, don't even recognize the facts behind the reality. Well, but it's a corru- it becomes a corrupt system. Yeah. Because then you have all these different people trying to, let's just say, like plug Wikipedia. into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it's not a clear and, um, and pure system. We would have to go past the walls of, you know, the second and third um, plug-in or app or... or uh, Age. <laughs> Hard, yeah, hard drive in order to be able to yeah. know what, you know, the real truth really is. And it's a wall that oh, you would have to go fireball. past. Yeah, you'd have to go past the system because there's two systems. There's what I call the everything. And you have sound, light, noise, religions, Akasha records, all these other things that people believe in on this reality mm-hmm. that's included in the everything. And then past that, where we all have originated from, I call it the no thing or the nothing. And the no thing and the nothing, it's pitch black. Uh, There's no sound and there's no separation. There's no everything, right? Because see, everything is a separation from the unified source, if people want to call that, or God. But isn't it still a part of it? No. So what happened is that we were, um, and uh, this is just what... Oh. My teachings, right, mm-hmm. from from where I come from and where and and other individuals that are highly, I don't know what you want to call it, conscious Evolved. on this planet. Yeah. Um so um basically we were um both parts of ourselves have been harvested uh or created in a petri dish. The spirit and soul has actually been harvested. So Ah. The dark ETs have been doing this stuff for a long time because originally a long, long time ago, there was ET races that learned how to like, when I, when I talk about this, it's like an ice cream scooper being scooped into an energy field and then that's the soul. So it's a fragment of a larger, it's a fragment of the no thing. Okay. So they scoop those energies out, those batter, you know, like a battery or this consciousness or whatever we, you know, emulate it into in a physical form. Okay. Um, and they carve that out and then they put them in electronic prisons or like a sphere and they hold them until they have a body. Well, other ET races didn't have really the technology to, to take us, fragment us, pieces of us off out of the no thing into the everything, right? Because there are a lot of really bad races, multidimensional, physical, whatever you want to exactly call them, um, that harvest us and they make bodies for us. So um, a lot of them went and stole and harvested um, our fragments, our soul, we'll call it an isby or fragment, and they harvest it. Uh, from other planets. So you would have ETs that would invade planets and they would literally imprison people, kill mass populations, and then they'd have a sphere ready for each fragment or soul. Oh, my. Prison. Yeah, and then they they bring them here. Like, here's a, here, here is a, a very bad place where most of the people that I've ever sat, did seated sessions with, and looked into their energy field. Most um, people did not come here. They were harvested and they were brought here into bodies. So there's this epic lie here in everything that we are somehow incarnating. Because you have to realize every religion on this planet, except for I think like, well, I think now even Tibetan Buddhism has been hijacked and the proper teachings of that. But they still have the Book of the Dead and they still do practices that train the monks in preparation for death so that they can go through the 90-day obstacle course after death and help each other so they're not captured by the heaven experience or the tractor beam. Oh, that's interesting because the Native Americans have only a seven-day process. And then India has a different amount of time process. That's rather interesting. Yeah, so most of us don't know this. So we think, you know, oh, yeah, it's a really great thing to go into the light. Yeah, I feel so warm and fuzzy. (laughs) And But we're just being captured into an electronic prison and then shot back through. So the interesting thing about this is that 
there's two components. There's two programs. One is the incarnation program, and one is the um, the uh, left lateralized hemisphere programs that are running on this planet um, that lateralize people into their left hemisphere. Um, Make that a little more simpler so I can consciously recognize what you're saying. Literal left brain. What yeah. is the power on the left side, and oh, what well, do you mean literal? Go ahead. Yeah. The, or lateral, whatever you say. Okay, so the brain isn't really connected. It's cor- connected at the base, you know, where it goes down to the spine. But if you were to take one out of a dead body, it doesn't connect. You can flop the two lobes apart. So even um, there's a really great video out there for people who don't really understand this or how, like a basic idea of how the operating system of the brain works. Because it's, it's our hard drive that has all this other information in it. Um, But it gets damaged so early on when we get, you know, kind of put in so that we don't have any memory that, you know, we've been forced in here and we don't have a lot of memory of where we were at in other places before we were kidnapped or harvested and and brought. Interesting. No wonder people feel not themselves. Well, this is the thing is left hemisphere predominantly by itself is reptile. Oh, well, that was really uh, convenient, huh? <laughs> yeah. So there's no, you know, there's no spontaneous. Um, so it's language, uh, technical. Um, uh, it deals with the past and the future. It um, is. It can be cold and calculated. It's very manipulative. It runs kind of a lower beta wave, which is disease, pain, uh, fear, me, you know, all about me all the time. Um, so we get lateralized because of the program into the left hemisphere. And this is the other thing too. I always have these people that tell me, well, you know, I'm right handed and I'm right brain. It's like, just because you're an artist doesn't make you that way. Artistry sometimes is a technical thing early on. So most people, you know, especially in the United States, I'd say probably like 99.9% of the population is left brain lateralized. You know, if you have pain, if you have disease, if you can't sleep, um, if you're stressed out, if you're thoroughly involved in the system, right. um, you're pretty left brain. And I feel like this is a reason why we can't get along. I mean, reptiles predominantly lay eggs and leave their offspring. They have no, they don't even really care if the No, I really have a thing for that. lizards now. Come on. <laughs> I'm serious. I've one tattooed to my leg, and I owned a South American iguana and uh, one that came from, you know, regular iguana. Okay, I, I love lizards. Yeah, but they also <laughs> have, like, you know. They have I get the drip little- because the soldier yeah. that I met that was the reptilian was a sweetheart. And I do believe that everything comes in its own, what they are programmed, and that they can, we can override these programs. See, that's the thing that makes me, you know, want to hear more, because if people can recognize what is literally the theme of things, then we can take our power back and change it. I believe that, that, totally. Right, but I think it's less of a we, and I think it's more of an I, um... Well, you me, know. myself, and I are the we. Didn't you right. know that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's an individual journey, right. except for there's so little information out there now that hasn't been, um, you know, new computer, yeah, new computer systems put into it as it's evolved. So there's That's no part clean, of the Mandela effect, too, then maybe, huh? <laughs> well, you know what? That's because they've screwed up so many of the timelines and the operating systems now are starting to kind of fight against the glitches. <laughs> Yeah, so there's so much stuff that's, like, bleeding through. Um, but then what's the right hemisphere if the left hemisphere of the brain, brains? <laughs> well, let's just call it, we'll call it in this reality, in the everything reality, because that's where it functions. We'll call it, like, the creator brain or the God brain or the part of your brain that the soul is embodied in or the fragment of the no thing. Uh, and so it deals with the present moment. It deals with symbology. That's why this whole, all this Illuminati stuff and all this symbology, it, it breaks down our right hemisphere so that it's impossible to use it because they're constantly flashing symbology at us, which the right hemisphere actually understands and picks up. 
but we don't because our technical part of our left hemisphere doesn't understand it. Sublineal so bullcrap. Oh, that's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> so in order to in order to actually uh and it's a delta pattern. So most people can actually connect with it if they can meditate for like eight hours and like bypass the body kind of an, and the general system. They don't bypass all the systems, but the general systems. Um, and if you want to heal from a disease or you want nutrition to work, you want these things to work, then then you have to have your right brain operating mm -hmm. um, because that's where everything in the present moment happens. If you're left brain lateralized, you'll never get well. And you'll always be in an acid state because that's reptiles. They're in a very kind of acid state um, and that's kind of left brain lateralized. So, and humans don't, um, I had a really good client of mine who was half um, reptilian and half human. Um, and he was talking about, you know, like their species and, and why there's chemicals in the water because they need to survive in a very acidy world, you know, right. kind of like Mars where nothing exists. And humans, we need, in order to be human, operating in a whole brain function or our right hemisphere, we need to be very alkaline. So, but isn't it interesting that some of the acids, like vinegar and stuff, actually alkalines us? Well, it's a fermentation. It's a little bit different. It's not a. It's not a chemical. It's a. It's a plant-based um, pH resolver. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that what they're putting out is you know chemtrails, uh -huh. heavy metals, uh, you know, like fluoride in the water. You know, a lot of these different things because there's so many of them that this is what they need in their system, you know, to make them okay. I mean, you know, you hear reports of, uh, you know, extraterrestrials that come here that are more like machines and have a lot of oil and chemicals. Like, you know, they're, uh, some of them will come in little ships down here and when they open the, you know, Hatch. the lid, mm -hmm. all these chemicals will come out and kill people. Ah! <laughs> That's what they, and they're more reptilian, you know, but that's what they, they do really well with. And I'm not saying like all reptilians are bad, no. but, you know, they've had a huge long <laughs> evolution process to become something else. Right. Shape-shifting, so, evolving, uh-huh. Right. So when, you know, we have the Anunnaki and the Greys and I don't know, I think there's probably like 10 different species here that um, are involved you know with our soul harvest and i mean that's what the big fight is over right now is between the two they're fighting with the two factions one that harvests souls and keep them and blah 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 um and then there's the other ones that deal with the bio suits and the biological material so they harvest stuff from here they take it to other planets and then they have slave labor and whatever else that's going to go on so right now you know there's all these threats well i'm going to nuke you well that's they're threatening. They're, you know, the good guys are threatening the bad ETs. They're like, look, we nuke the whole planet. There won't be any biological material left. And there won't be any souls or batteries, you know, to stuff in there. And so well, then and don't they, the um, UFOs, which I have heard personally live, that they would go over the nuclear power plants and take whatever energy they need from it. You know, the waste or whatever. I wish we could work in together with this pattern and plan. Right, but the the second system that came in uh, started to override the first system of the planet and what it was supposed to be. And now we have the third, you know, the third system that was implanted where, you know, we put nuclear power plants on the earth that on kill us. On the fault us. lines, the idiots. Oh, pardon me. Well, they kill us and everybody else so <laughs> that the, the you know, negative ETs and ones that have lower technology can come here and harvest the energy so they can move back and forth and whatever. So the whole thing, I mean, this is the thing is like people, uh, where's the cosmic cops when you need them, um, within well, a couple minutes, Bridget, we're going to have okay. our first break. So I just thought I'd tell you in case you wanted to <laughs> go off into another area, but the brain, you're so right. And, uh, yeah, I, we'll have to talk about what's happening to kids and like when children, true, kids are baby goats, Bridget. <laughs> I'm trying to change that. I will read articles, and our language has gotten so lazy. And I'm like, these are children. They're our offspring in our future. 
They're not baby goats. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those sticklers I had. Because I want the respect for us to know the difference. And we are just big children in adult outfits. And when we can recognize the right hemisphere, gives you a whole lot better of an existence. And I think that we can deny the left hemisphere just by using common sense. Some well, but this is thinking. the thing is, is we can't live on this planet either way. And, and we can discuss that when we come back because there's a, there's a problem with being right brain lateralized as well. And I believe it. It's a two part system that has to be unified in each one of us. Is that so with that, the rainbow bridges? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure about that. Um, because we should be able to connect the difference if we're our own AI. And we recognize ourselves as living entities with power of conclusions. I mean, even our yeah. wounds create a conclusion. You know? Right, but we have to we have to create individually a unified field in an alpha okay. brain state, which is both lobes working together. Well, that's what I mean. We're going to go on a magic carpet ride for a few minutes. We'll be right back. Host of Truth Jihad Radio. Federal prosecutors, Department of Homeland Security agents, and curious passersby often ask me, just what is this Truth Jihad thing anyway? Well, everybody knows what truth is, but jihad is a misunderstood term. Jihad means effort or struggle. The greater jihad is the struggle to be a better person, while the lesser jihad is the struggle to defend the community. Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, did say that the best jihad is a word of truth flung in the face of a tyrant. And that's what we do here at Truth Jihad Radio. Every Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, 5 to 7 Pacific, right here on Revolution Radio. often unprotected and preyed upon in the most horrific ways. Children who grow up to tell their stories. It is time for the world to listen. My name is Venny Koshis. I am a cult and child abuse survivor turned thriver. From religious abuse to abuses enacted in the youth reform system to abusive government funded programs and more, I am bringing you trauma survival stories which the mainstream media rarely covers. Support freedomslips.com and tune into my show, Survivor Voices, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. And remember, whatever you do to the least among you, you do unto yourselves. Find some comfort at Willow's World, a variety of news, commentary, and poetry 
at Willow's Poetry Corner, where there are comfy cushions and a tempting selection of delectable comestibles. A show that's quirkily and quintessentially British, with a unique twist featuring Willow Andreasen, your host. Join Willow, Monday, 6 to 8 p.m. EST, Studio B. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... Welcome back on this first day of February 2018 here at Adventures of a Feral. Hippie, hippie, hippie. Okay, now, now that we've had our brain stimulated, because <laughs> I would really just want to know the secret, and the stories so far have just made sense to me, so keep going. <laughs> they just made sense. Um... All right, so... Well, but it does. It makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we'll go back to the two operating programs. We'll, t- we'll say um, the, um, um, that keep us kind of asleep. So uh, nowadays, they're really starting to affect children. One of this is the left brain lateralization. Last two years in private practice, I worked on more babies and kids than, than I've ever, ever, ever worked on in my entire practice. Well, what um, was the ailments and what were you practicing? Um, well, I, tr- I practice traditional osteopath medicine, but I also do a lot of, you know, medicine work, like shamanism and stuff like that. And I do um, a technique that I call the reboot. I went and I learned it from a few other people. Not a lot of people do it and not a lot of people do it well. Right. Um, and it uh, it actually reboots the whole brain system and the body. It brings the whole, whole body online because uh, your right side, your right brain, kind of deals with your left side, and your left brain deals with your right side. So if you don't have right hemisphere, you know, on at all, then you're pretty sure that your aware side, which is your left side of your body, is not operating. Which means that you can't sense, right? So you can also be hijacked because since you can't sense, you can be infiltrated by beings and have memories and past life memories and lots of different stuff that seems really nice, Um, but that also can be lies. And because if you're tapping into the whole system, the computer system, you can have visions or past lives and lots of different stuff that isn't even true. It could be somebody else because we're all connected in those systems. So people go in and have past life. I've had to actually fix a lot of people in my past who've had past life regression because they went in, they saw a past life, um, and then they came back with what the person in that past life died with. Just because you go in and and you see something, right, doesn't mean that it was you. Right, and it also doesn't mean that you're not bringing something back with you. That's exactly. why I will never allow channeling or anything else like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Because this is how they kind of... Um, and, and Make you feel special. And, you know, usually it's <laughs> always kind of when you're... Your left, you know, your left hemisphere is easy to program with any kind of program. Um, that isn't you. That isn't truth. That isn't fact. Um, and so people sometimes don't really understand... The difference, and because of the work that I do in metaphysics, I learned early on that um, sometimes the brain um, can be overrided, and people think certain things that aren't true, and and then we kind of start to move in. Then, so there's the real stuff that's going on, then there's this kind of stuff that's being plugged into the brain that people think is real past lives. I mean, I'm not saying it isn't real; I'm just saying it's more complicated. And then there's the third part, which is mental illness, where the stuff's playing over and over and over again because now the program or the implant in the brain of the person is completely off. Completely. And um, the other thing, too, is like um, I just, 
Um, this is a lot of stuff that I haven't really talked publicly about. So that's why I'm kind of like, oh, no. Oh, no, so, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so big pharma, you know, started creating drugs. So basically the Western medical system is based off Thorazine, which was like the first drug. And it was used in mental hospitals. So it makes psychology and psychiatry kind of a fraudulent. Well, what does it do? <laughs> fraudulent. Well, Thorazine, it gives people a frontal lobotomy. So when we had all these people in mental hospitals, I mean, there were like 50,000, 200,000 people in some of these hospitals for a long time until Reagan abolished that system. Anybody could put anybody in them. And if you didn't want your baby, you could leave it on the steps and leave no questions asked. But, you know, it was all experimental. But it, for, you know, quite a while, it got really bad. In the beginning, they would, like, stick stuff up people's nose, like hangers, oh. and actually take away their ah. uh, I am part of their brain, who they are. <laughs> and then, um, then they could experiment them on them indefinitely. Then they went to this rotator, which cut a hole into the brain. And, you know, then oh. they – people even – even the bad people were like, okay, this is a little too extreme. So they came up with a drug called Thorazine that they actually still give people that's a frontal lobotomy. And you don't have to take it very long before you start to lose that whole I am function. Aww. So this is the basis of Western medicine. Um, so most of the drugs that they give people now for anything, MS, uh, fibromyalgia, pain, chronic fatigue, lupus, uh, like it goes on and on, epilepsy. The drugs block the neurotransmitters, right, because they're opiate-derived. And when the neurotransmitter of the brain is blocked, you don't feel anymore. There's nothing going on, and so you don't have a brain-body connection anymore. In any of your bodies, your etherical, your astral, any bodies. Well, you need an electrical charge for that, right? Your oh. brain sends out electrical charges. That's to- where the zombie comes in at. Well, and so most people are on some oh. of these types of drugs, but the biggest thing is that um, that I see with a lot of these drugs is it makes your body literally a homemade hotel for entities that want bodies, you know, that, that are looking for bodies on this planet to yeah. manage and run. So there's a lot of possession um, that uh, happens when you start taking these drugs because the brain can't um, communicate with the body anymore. So it can't decide what's good, what's bad, should we get rid of that, should, you know, and your body will not regenerate itself because your brain is not sending signals into the body to go, hey, liver, how are you doing? Hey, let's regenerate you. Let's go map the DNA blueprint of the liver. Let's come back and remodify the liver and make a whole new liver. Well, that stops happening. So all processes um, stop happening on on a lot of different levels. And, you know, like um, in case people want to know, my, um, I come from two, you know, bloodlines on both sides. Um, and my mom's mother, she was a prophet and she also was an exorcist. And so, you know, um, because of that family line, you have these things trafficking you from birth. Yeah, no doubt. Right. And you don't like your family. <laughs> so, um, these things are totally real and they can move in. And, and I feel really bad for people, you know, um, when, they have kids that are on different kinds of drugs and the personality starts to change and the kids become more aggressive. It's not them. It's something else in them. Exactly. Even introduced by food and environment, just like you were saying earlier. Yeah. So I think I I read um, one of the schools I went to for the reboot. uh, There was a book and some scientific, you know, information that we had to read through for the course But um, one of the things in the 1950s, mind you, in America, we are the most left brain lateralized country in the um, in the world. Even um, everything about our whole system, education and everything, left brain lateralizes us from the base. And a lot of it has to do with the, you know, the whole hospital signal. But that's fraud, too. Doctors are on the fraudulent end as well. under, you know, common law or, you know, under admiralty law, they were the dock attendants that would register all of the stuff out of the cargo ships that would come to the dock for that particular country. So the doctor now is registers the berth, which is the cargo that comes out of the 
um, the, um, you know, the mothership or the birth, right? And it's a live birth, so the cargo and the product is good. Um, or if it dies, then, you know, they, they register it as, you know, um, bad damage cargo. And then you get a stock certificate, which is a death certificate. So birth certificates and death certificates are stock certificates. So no matter what, the doctor is at the root of the um, admiralty law um, enslavement of um, our world. And they don't even know it because they're doing the work that decides whether we're good, we're a good product or we're not a good product. And then once they send that off, then the... Um, Anyway, it's a whole other, that's a whole other thing, but um, so, you know, the whole system that we have to really realize our fraud. So anyway, so 1950s, they found that uh, it took until people were like around age 20 to 25 before they were left hemisphere lateralized, which meant they were good slaves, uh, that they would, you know, their alarm clock would go off at six o'clock in the morning, they could get up because the left brain deals with that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, and there, and there may be people out there that totally think, you know, what I'm talking about is totally poo poo, but this is my experience. This is what I've learned over 30 years working on people and all the underground doctors and researchers and, um, my star family, you know, this information comes in from lots of different places, right? So that's, I just want to tell people that. Um, and so then in the eighties, they showed that, um, the left brain lateralization was happening in children at age five, which is before they finish their delta state, right? Because they, from when they're born until age seven, they're in a delta brainwave state. They're predominantly right brain because they're in the present moment downloading every event that's happening. Um, and then at age seven, they're supposed to move into what's called the alpha brainwave state, which is whole brain, but they're sabotaged at age five into the reptilian state. So um, nowadays they're being, you know, what I'm seeing in my practice is that they're being um, lateralized um, in as fetuses. And people can go, um, if you want to... How would they achieve that? <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, well, the, when you go and have, um, well, there's just The inoculations? Yeah, that too, but um, there's a lot of procedures that they use in hospitals that start the um, frequency, like, well, let's call it a frequency shift, right, and the stress in the mother. Um, but uh, number one is, um, you know, when you go in and they put lube on your stomach, I forget the word right now, and then they look at the baby. For the ultrasound. Yeah, it's one of the most dangerous things that you could do, and people, like, go in every month, and it's sending yeah. a... It's a fr sending a frequency that mm. disturbs the membrane, right, and the brain. Oh, right. And then we also have all this EMF. We have these cell phone well, towers. nowadays, yeah. So there's a lot of things that are vibrationally going on, frequency going on that we can't see. Um, that is causing, you know, a lot of the issue. So right. So one of the things that I've noticed is that, you know, over the last, I don't know, five years, it seems like cancer in children, you know, is, has become an epidemic um, and lots of other diseases, you know, that I'm seeing in babies. I mean, just being born, it's like Aww. shocking. So this is all has to do with that left brain lateralization. So trying to get them early on into like a right hemisphere um, you know, situation to try to balance it out before they get too much older, which is not putting them in the public school system because then you're going to like hereditarily impose left brain lateralization because right. that's, that's what it's all about. Sit down, shut up. You will listen to what I'm telling you. We'll download this information into you and you will never be free <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah, I found that out in the 70s. Yeah, so we're in a situation where um, people really, if you're going to have children, you're going to really have to kind of come up with a plan on how um, you're going to make sure. Um, well, as long as they're taught common sense and critical thinking, all humanity could get along. Well, yeah, but, you know, the thing is, is like evolve consciously. That's not part of that. So hmm. how do we get... You know, they ha we have to be in a whole brain. You have to reteach the whole parent system. 
well, that's the thing is that it's. I mean, I char- was born in '58, and I had to give it for myself because I wasn't taught it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, I kind of wanted to tell people a little bit about myself um, and why uh, I decided, like, uh, in I don't know, 2000. 13 to start trying to, um, you know, because I kind of lived in the shadows and the underground and, you know, all this other stuff and, and been around people in those um, areas for a long time. And, uh, and I think it was about 2013, I really decided to try to start moving myself out into the public, right? Um, but I had a lot of uncertainty too because I was so different. My whole life, I've been so freaking different and just my experiences. Um, and so what happened was, I think it was like 2013, I, a lot of my teachers, some of them are native, um, and uh, just some work that I do, I do seated sessions with people, like shamanism type work, and I, I go into their fields and I try to fix a lot of stuff, and I try to bring their energy bodies together, and I, I, I help them to do work that they need to do and I give them practices so that they can heal and get healthy and well and also start to become like a unified being. Mm-hmm. Cool. So what started happening in 2013 is um, that um, they were no longer sending me to where the being originated and like what planet or universe. I was no longer going there to start the sessions anymore. They were sending me to the future lives because they said, you know, basically the past, present, and future are all happening simultaneously. So um, whatever's going on now is also happening in the future, right? Mm -hmm. It, It affects the future timeline in a way that it's actually happening now. So the people in the future, 2013, this is happening to them now. Right, because they're in 2013. So I, st- I worked on this one lady. Uh, it was the first time that I ever kind of was shaken to my core doing this kind of work um, and saw the real effects of what was going on on the planet. Um, and because of my original status, um, you know, as a star kid, most of us that came in the second wave didn't make it. Most of us were murdered. We were put in mental hospitals and experimented on. Um, we've been handled. We usually have major handlers. Everybody that comes into our life are handlers. So, you know, our survival level is like zero. So it's best to try to keep yourself in the shadows, right? Um, right. But when you're a kid, it's hard because you're doing all this magical stuff and your parents are trying to keep a lid on it, right? So nobody's like noticing what the hell's going on. Uh, so it's, it's Well, I was always labeled crazy and that I had no idea what I was doing. They yelled at me a lot. Yeah, so they're trying to keep a handle on you to appear normal, right? Because it takes a lot of work to appear normal. (laughs) So uh, anyway, so in this future life, uh, this woman, um, she was having these um, battles with her ex-husband. And she wanted him back. He didn't want anything to do with her because she was crazy. And um, she, you know, kept trespassing and all kinds of stuff. Well, I saw that... um, she in the in 2000 and 2300 that people were making contracts now that were going to give let's just say bad guys or control freaks or maybe people that have a little bit more negative reptilian bloodline in them uh, we're making these um, energetic contracts, physical contracts. Uh, I saw that you know people could sign physical contracts that were actually in 2013 would force incarnation on them through the computer system and that they would be used, actually physically used by these people, bankers, um, people that, and so she was in a relationship with a guy that was similar to this. And so there was this contract where in 2000, uh, 2300, 2300, that basically in that era, there were, there are people that are humans that are incarnated and we have a body and everything and our bodies are made a little bit larger and they have these rods kind of coming out of them like rods energetic rods like and the beings that have contracts with now are like all shriveled up and sick um and so they're like these like raisin looking things that sit on these um energy you know pull platforms on us and we actually 
they connect in our brain and use our body like a machine while Mm. we're trapped in it and we're the energy for that so i freaked out right i i totally freaked out and um i realized like where we're at now and a lot of this weird contractual stuff that's going on legal you know getting a business license i mean people people have zero idea what they're signing i know right show you so you don't know an oath of office uh when i lobbied i saw that anybody that takes the oath of office doesn't even matter if it's a doctor or whatever else it's it's like a contract for demonic control so there's no possibility that they could do the right thing if they wanted to so like marriage too don't it yeah so anyway um after that, I just really wanted to try to figure out, and like I said, a lot of my teachers thought it was time for me to kind of come out of the closet and try to move forward and teach, but it really hasn't been easy because you come from a place where everything, you know, your family tells you, like, no, we don't talk to people about any of this. Um, we don't talk to them about our bloodline. We don't talk to them about, you know, the Sasquatches, and we yeah, don't but talk to them. there's no sense in living in fear. Isn't that what we're here to prove, too? Well, but, you know, the thing is, like, when right after a situation when I was a kid because of something that I did, um, literally I was attacked and um, basically um, I was hit in the head by the butt of a military rifle and my head was broken and my brain was on the ground. So my parents had to run out of the house to collect me up and get me to a hospital. Whoa. So it's not, you know, there's one thing of living in fear and one thing living in fact. Right. So, so there's a diversification of <laughs> behaviors. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, so as an adult, it makes it a little bit difficult. And um, so I was basically a star kid. I was brought here. I haven't had any lifetimes here or anything else like that. And um, between age four and five, I was fully activated. And I had, uh, would be in the category of stigmata, but they were burns that would form. Uh, I would go into these heavy fevers and I wasn't here during the time that it, it went on. And then um, I went through three activations over that year. And then the same symbol would um, appear, you know, through the burn coming out of my foot with a high fever. And it would be black, the burn, and then, you know, it would peel off and things like that. But it did smell like roses, which was, you know, part of the whole stigmata thing. And after I came out of all that, then I um, started, you know, working with insects and would raise them from the dead. And there were, there were some that liked to be raised from the dead and some that didn't like to be raised from the dead. But I spent <laughs> two years doing this. I had like a whole like laboratory under the Neat. porch. And um, so, you know, out the gate, I was like a little too extreme for this planet. So <laughs> I um, loved it, but still, that's so cool. Yeah, so, you know, as I've developed, um, what my family does, my star family, and I, I'm going to call them a counselor or whatever else, but they're not really kind of, they're not really like that. Um, but they send me um, uh, triggers. Um, they put stuff into this uh, reality, holographic reality, periodically. And what they do is they, I dream about it. And then a few days later, a few months, you know, I'll be walking somewhere and I'll see it and I'll pick it up and I'll bring it with me. And usually it has a download in it of something. Um, and uh, so this is how they communicate with me. And I love Harry Potter, you know, the whole part. Oh, when I mean, you were talking about the crystals and holding the energies in that, that's what popped into my mind. Yeah, the port key, you know, when they touch it and then they go somewhere else, that's kind of like... Oh, well, that's out. kind of cool too, yeah. Yeah, this, well, I don't go <laughs> other places physically, but... Um, there's always some kind of like holographic download. And so I've never really talked to my star family about it, but I always get the sense that um, they don't come into here. They, they don't come in here at all. And they completely, um, at this point, stay away. Um, and that they tell me, well, we put you there. And I'm like, but what, you know, like, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? And it's like, <laughs> well, we put you there. You figure, figure it out. Get a report, grip. And report back to us what's really going on. Right, right. Because <laughs> we right. don't really know. You know, we don't well, know it's how. It's rather interesting to think that each one of us could have that 
Because in the Bible it says that we're learning things to send home to a source God, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that would be in the everything, though. So there are so. seven different kinds of sources. That's interesting. Family so. lineages or plans to the planet. Yeah. So I ended up in a family that kind of had two bloodlines. The women in my family um, come from a really old one. Um, I had really powerful past women in my family. My mom um, was handled early on in her life uh, and, you know, pretty much destroyed. So by the time I was born, um, she just mostly worked with plants and she could get plants to grow. She could get a zucchini plant to grow, you know, six foot tall with no fertilizer or anything. <laughs> Um, but that's where she escaped to after they put her in a, she had a handler that married her that was wealthy from the East Coast. And they um, put her in a mental hospital for six months and, and experimented on her. And then They did that her. to my grandmother too. Yeah, so she was fried. So her genetics weren't that great and, you know, all of her stuff. And she wasn't a very good teacher. So it kind of fried a a line, but I had my great grandmother and my grandmother to teach me, and then my dad. We're at the top of the hour break, so hold that thought, and we'll be back in a few shakes of the promos. Joseph Atwell, author of Caesar's Messiah, The Roman Conspiracy to Invent Jesus, and Shakespeare's Secret Messiah, the groundbreaking discoveries that gives us a new understanding of how governments and elites use mind control to manipulate their subjects. Join Mr. Atwell as he lifts the veils of deceptions of our modern world. Mondays, 12 noon Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time, on Revolution Radio. Barbara DeLong, host of Nightlight Radio, inviting you to join me on a cosmic journey, exploring a metaphysical montage of spiritual material, covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between, including spiritual readings for those who seek enlightenment. Let Nightlight provide you with equal measure of light, love and laughter, insight, wisdom, and inspiration. Monday nights, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern, right here on Studio B, Revolution Radio, at freedomslips.com. And this is Rocco. And the Bo and Rocco Show is here to offer insight into legal and lawful remedies. Our goal is to remain free and help others remain free in an ever-increasing police-like state. With the help of our guests, we try to answer questions such as what went wrong and what can we do about it. So tune into Revolution Radio at www.freedomslips.com Wednesday nights, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to listen to the Bo and Rocco Show. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Revolution Radio. Enter into a world unseen on Raven Star's Witching Hour. 
you will encounter eclectic topics from the realm of spirit brought into our matrix of truth. With your host, the Solaris Blue Raven. Solaris will bring you an array of unique guests covering topics from ghostly spirits to amazing anomalies, covert technology, UFOs, and shadowy global events. And that's right here at Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com, Saturdays, midnight till 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Let the magic rise. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... Welcome back to freedomslips.com, revolution.radio, and Haggy Shack. Yes, I was just uh, thinking that it, since it's the first, that we really have a good new beginning happening. So, And I know you're enjoying the show, so go to the home pages and do the donate click because we are listener supported. Welcome back, Bridget. Welcome back. Hey, um, I'm just going to shoot people on my website. Uh, it got crashed, and so at least I have a contact page up on it in case people want to contact me. Um, and especially about the star kids or, you know, you have a star kid. Um, we would gladly love to help you out um, with that. So it's coe-llc.com. And like I said, everything got wiped out. I'm just rebuilding it. So you can at least contact me there on the contact page. On the contact page. Yeah, <laughs> I know. that's all that's up. <laughs> sometimes it's a simple click and then sometimes it's not. It's Boy, serious. what a thing to do. Oh, okay, they so don't want the truth out there, Bridget. Well, the thing is, is like even the truth isn't the truth. Right. <laughs> it's all storytelling. Yeah. And, you know, I always get, like, fed up with some of these, you know, UFO people because I think a lot of them, a lot of these organizations are fake and that they, oh, they're yeah. actually agents. And so they're not really reporting the truth. Um, and so I contact them and I kind of, like, tell them who I am and what I'm about. And I'm a star kid. And, you know, I have tons of experiences with all kinds of different ETs and um, just a lot of different stuff. And I... Um, know a lot of different stuff about this reality and it's weird how they react to me you know oh you, um, you what do they call them um new agers you <laughs> well when no, it's old think, information and actually old age but you know. know and they're always talking about disclosure it's like do you know how many people on this planet have had et experiences do you think that they need disclosure they, uh, they they know exactly what's going on i want identification is what i want which yeah. one is which <laughs> Because I know I met one from Cirrus and one from the Reptilians that I personally. And that yeah, are ones and how many, how many more you've uh, probably come in contact with that you have zero idea? I could tell you stories, oh no, of the ideas I have. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that. Um, so I want to go back just real quick about brain lateralization. So a lot of these people, you know, in the whole new age... I call it the bull cocky. It's just another, <laughs> it's another Jesus Christ moment where Jesus is coming to save us. I know, right? No, it's the Galactic Federation. Oh, jeez. <laughs> they don't want to save us. That's what we're here to do is figure it out. You know, I they know. don't. Um, it, it takes free will. And if you have like 98% and of good the people intent. sleep, then, then you don't have the 51% corporate control on the planet to bring free will so that they'll come and help you. And you know what? It's an individual thing. I, I, you know, I had to deal with the Bible a lot when I was growing up because, you know, my grandmother's position in the Pentecost church. But, you know, the one thing that always caught me over and over again was that, you know, the red part where Jesus talks. I think it's like in Philippians or something like that. And 
Jesus says, point blank, continue to live out, uh, continue, continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, which says no one is coming to save you. Right. Get your act together. And are you going to be scared to death? Hell yeah. Are you going to freak out? Yeah, but it's the only way to the other side. And By releasing the trauma. Yeah, and I think Carolyn Meese had, uh, back in the early 90s, called it, um, what she called spiritual madness. You know, that you have to go through the bat, you know, SH experience in order to get yourself to the other side. And because you get to the other side doesn't mean that this is changing, right? It means you've changed in how you deal with what's going on around you. It doesn't mean because you did something that it's actually going to change the group or the whole or change the, you know, um, consciousness. It's still probable, though, because if we set the right example, anything's possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like one of my... um, One of my native teachers, you know, told me once, he said, maybe 200 years down the road, you might see the outcome of that. Mm -hmm. That's why you do it now. You won't be around, most likely. Hopefully, you won't be incarnated back in here in 200 years to see what's happening. Yeah, karma has no expiration date. So, (laughs) one of the things I want to go back to with brain, brain lateralization, okay, so, you know, we have a glandular system that produces the chemicals that create energy fields or uh, defend energy fields or manifest reality. So your glandular system is like attracts like. So whatever your glandular system is producing or not producing is creating the energy field via your brain uh, to attract it or fight against it or, you know, whatever else it's going to be. So it happens in the brain because that's where, you know, the Taurus field comes up and out like a donut so a lot of these people are into the Taurus field that everything has a Taurus field and it does but humans it's so far off and the earth is so far off at this point because she's dead she's barely holding on Mm -hmm. Um, so she's got a speed wobble just like us so say your left brain lateralized well then you only really have the right side is coming out of the Taurus field and it's it's spinning well The other side is not doing anything, which gives you like a dizzy speed wobble and you're disconnected from everything. So people have to realize like um, the lateralization goes into how your energy body operates, how it affects everything around you, whether you can manifest a reality or manifest your dream. You know, it's also connected to the biology of the hormones and secretions that are created from the glandular system that um, that the brain is sending signals to. Which is all screwed up from the glyphosate and the big pharma and... Well, and our belief systems. That about too, yeah, reality. exactly. So, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so people have to realize, like, uh, this is the difference, okay? This, is, this would be the difference. So there's a story. It was a scientific, a uh, whole scientific project. There was a scientist that had worked at that time on sheetgrass because sheetgrass has come to America and it's literally destroying everything. And it's uh, overgrowing. It's really fire. It's a serious fire hazard. Um, even in the desert, we see it here where we just have sand, like beautiful sand and sagebrush. Now we have sheetgrass growing everywhere um, because mm-hmm. it, it has infiltrated into the system uh, from somewhere else you know, on a shoe, on a boat, on an airplane, you know, wherever somebody's been, you traffic stuff all over the globe. Right. Animals do too, but go ahead. Right. So, but it's also a system failure, right? Because now you're putting a a hard drive of another system into another system, right? So it's all computer oriented. So anyway, um, they did these studies for like 20 or 25 years on sheet grass and they took the same sheet grass and they kept mutating its DNA and RNA and shifting this and shifting that and doing this until, cause they were trying to find a way to like genetically get in it and disable it. Right. right. So one day after like 20 or 25 years, they, um, <laughs> the scientists all go in there and the sheet grass had totally changed. Like it was totally different overnight. And um, they went in and they looked at it, and it had returned itself genetically, DNA, RNA, the whole nine yards, 
back to the original form <laughs> before they started messing with it. <laughs> so if we have a whole brain function and our torus field is operating straight the way that it needs to operate straight, and we can really, you know, focus in on the present moment, if we have, and this is a me me thing doing it for me. This isn't me relying on doctors and machines and rife machines and all this other stuff to actually fix a DNA override. This right. is me doing it by me making sure that I'm a whole brain function, I'm a unified system, and I'm connected to the unified system. And then I can override anything that happens to me, anything in the DNA or the RNA. So... Hmm. When people get vaccines, one of the things that I was shown was that it hooks on the DNA. So I, I had a client of mine who had brain cancer. I had brain cancer too, but um, and he ended up dying. But when I would work on him, they would take me in and they would show me um, the DNA strand and they would show me a lot of different stuff. I got really into Bruce Lipton when he came out onto the market because he talked about a lot of the stuff that they told me. So Neat. when I was working on him, even a thought becomes a hook on the DNA and so you can have emotional patterns or belief systems from your family that are hooks on their DNA and then it becomes hereditary in you right so you have a heretic uh, emotion predisposition for certain kinds of hormones attraction and things like that because it's attached to your DNA Mm -hmm. but once you work through it and you heal it it will actually like vanish off well this is what vaccines do vaccines go in to the body and they put a hook onto the DNA where it's appropriate so that your body replicates itself with that disease. Disgusting. And then what happens is when you have a baby, you already have a hook for this disease. So now you give that um, d- disease information to your baby. And so mm-hmm. now it's a d- it becomes not just a hook on the DNA. Now it becomes part of their DNA. So they start to replicate with this as if they have this disease, right? Jeez. But then we, we vaccinate them anyway again. Uh. So now they get another hook because it's a different type, right? Because this is more the, um, the now. So in order for people to be able to get past this stuff, they have to get to a place where they're more alpha wave, their torus field, their whole brain. Um, they're in prime physical health because, you know, if you have pain or disease or anything – that's off. You shouldn't have it because we're not supposed to. Dis- we're not supposed to have disease, and we're not supposed to age. Um, and uh, it's all this stuff with this left brain lateralization, which includes you know chemtrails, and I mean they keep you know putting more and more into the environment to keep us like really kind of you know seriously screwed up. But there is a if you do all the right things and you become a unified being, you should be able to sort out just naturally without even thinking about your DNA, your RNA, all of it would come back up to its original systems, which would be a more cleaner or pure state. I love it. So I always encourage people like, you know, instead of paying that mortgage, maybe, you know, go to a monastery and learn how to meditate, (laughs) you know, to bring yourself kind of in balance, the more in balance you bring yourself into, the better your systems. Well, you I'm know, so off the grid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love being off the grid because I am making and I always have made my own choices. I've never followed. But see, it was the universe who showed me that was the easier ticket to take. <laughs> you know, than trying to have to make things happen because that would be the left brain. So I guess I've been working a lot on the right side. Yeah, exactly. Because I love um, babies and teaching youngins <laughs> and things like that. Of course, I don't have any around me now. My youngest is 20, so. Been there, done that. Yeah, yep, yep. Well, you can always, you know, adopt. No, thanks. <laughs> I got a goose. That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I have a goose. <laughs> I do. I have a goose. Yeah, she's a frilly goose, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's a foofy girl goose? Yes, she is. Yes, yeah, so there's a long s- story with the goose, but that's all right. If You read my thing. That, remember it said Norman, the goose next door? Well, he Sorry. ended up killed, and so another goose showed up, which is gooses. The gooses. <laughs> gooses. Gooses. 
We yeah. like we like fowl. Fowl are good people. Uh, my son was a bird of prey and national wildlife. He oh, he worked with everything. So, but anyway, we were talking how to recognize our own choice of belief systems as well because we don't always know and we might be feeling something and we don't listen to our body telling us this is not right this is not right <clears throat> well and sometimes we're so good at the system teaching us how to override it sit down and be quiet listen to the storytelling right now don't you know, don't move around in your seat. You can't get up and move around. But I feel like I have to go poo-poo. No, not right now. It's not a good time. So you don't even feel like your basic, you know, needs. <laughs> I know, right? Jeez, poor baby. Potty time is in two hours. You hold that sucker in. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's so dangerous. Why do we do this to our offspring is beyond me. But the thing is, is like the people that are doing it to them, it's been done to them. You right. Know what I mean? like it's, oh, I don't it accept becomes, that as a good enough excuse for it. Uh, but what happens is, <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, it becomes hereditary because mm -hmm. it's it's actually part of the override of the DNA. Once once you, you go through it and you're completely asleep at the wheel, then it's part of your DNA programming. It's an override. So when you have a child, it's automatically in their DNA. Interesting. And so it's easier to, um, you know, replicate, you know, the control systems. Every once in a while you get a few that, um, you know, are uh, moving and shaking a little bit more. But then they get moved to, like, the special needs class. <laughs> and oh, all three of my children were put into the gifted classes. Exactly. They took and tried to overextend their realities or their training. Yeah. Whew. But my one daughter, she was actually saving the world for a while there. And that's not normal. <laughs> now, my son's a different story, and then my daughter now. So, you know, I just bless them for what they can do because I knew I tried to give them the choice of the freedom. Even though I'm not saying I didn't inoculate them, I didn't have this information way back when. I was a big part of the system, and but I was fighting the system as well. But still, oh my gosh. So what else kind of uh, things have you accomplished in your practices? Um, well, I do a lot of different stuff. Age 40, I went back to school for biodynamic farming. Oh, that's um, one of my favorite conversations with you. <laughs> um, and uh, it really kind of helped um, over, you know, the course of my life. I've been in private practice over 30 years. And um, I'm always moving back towards the whole, you know, nutrition. What is nutrition? And going back to school really helped me to realize um, I had worked with this um, immunologist and some other people, underground ones. You know, they don't have licenses. They see people. Um, they refuse to be part of the system. You mm -hmm. know, if you're licensed, you can't do whatever you want to do. Even as a doctor, you have to do what they want you to do. Otherwise, they pull your license and then you, you know, have $400,000 worth of medical school bills and, you know, whatever else. And you're really hoping for a yacht and a great life and a house. <laughs> so it kind of really kind of just All in one. That. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so I've worked with a lot of amazing people and been in clinic where I do most of the traditional osteopath or structural and energy medicine. Um, and it, sometimes it's worked and sometimes it's not. They sometimes have like a bit of an ego. Um, but one of the biggest things that I learned was that, you know, we have everything on this planet. Okay. So we'll talk about the original system is microbial, right? Okay. So everything, when they started it all, kablam, they had to give everything a, um, uh, you know, a good place to live and grow in, right? And so it all, the, the original hard drive was microbial, right? So everything that lives on this planet has microbes. So the big problem with like growing food right now and, and losing all of this topsoil is we're actually... It isn't so much we're losing the topsoil, so in these places we can't grow anything at all. Nothing will grow because it becomes like a desert. The problem is, is that we lost the microbe. We lost the original hard drive that um, helped to assimilate information and, and, and lives in everything. So 
and how that um, comes about, one of the things I do is I teach people how to make um, biodynamic compost for their yard so that they can actually um, re represent putting in um, a fresh hard drive system um, of microbes into their land because that's what we build in biodynamics we build very very amazing rich microbial medicine that uh, can be sprayed and and put out onto the land to help um, replace it but this is the thing you have to keep doing it in your area because the chemtrails sterile the soil in some places i think dane was saying it's like 12 feet of soil trees are just falling right over because there's no microbes left in the soil right there's nothing uh to help the i mean the only thing that's going to be left is the uh mushrooms because you know they don't mind heavy metals they don't mind radiation which is a, another wonderful topic but um so let's just talk about um inflammation because we hear inflammation inflammation oh you got inflammation you there's inflammation you're <laughs> you're inflammatory um, our biosuits cannot live with a refreshment of microorganisms all the time. This is why people will find uh, fermented foods and stuff like that to actually heal them. Maybe not well all the time, but they can actually override, say, a cancer program because these fermented foods have all these microorganisms in them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, at, at the at the ground base, so. What's happening is is probiotics. I, you know, I wouldn't recommend like pro, powdered probiotics or whatever. I would recommend food, right. fermented food as a replacement of the <laughs> microorganisms. In some cultures, uh, um, they, you know, um, eat soil. They make a compost soil that's edible. And it puts all the microorganisms back in your system and it'll override any kind of disease you have, even if you're dying. Um, you eat enough of that and you're replenished, but you have to stay on it because we have such a sterile environment. You know, back in the original, you know, where this planet was, you could literally go anywhere and everything was microbial rich. You could drink out of the water microbes, you could eat stuff off the tree microbes, plants, fruit, had tons of microbes in it. Nowadays, it's like because of the sterility has no microbes. So when you eat stuff like that's homogenized and pasteurized you actually kill all of the microorganisms in your gut right they said one microwave food yo that's even worse so we're going to talk about that on a large scale but so you have all these microbes that help the cell hold together so this is what inflammation really is it's a lack of microbial organisms in the cell right so once the microorganisms for whatever reason leave the cell they abandon the cell right and what do you have 50 trillion cells um and this is the main reason that mutation starts to happen and you can get like different kinds of diseases because the cell literally because you know i went back to school in the medical field because i thought about going to the there's a program in spain dark field hematology program so i wanted to i went back into the medical system to kind of learn about what cells look like, what do they look like when they're diseased, you know, when they come out of the blood, um, blah, 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 you know, because that's where Western medicine is at. Dark field hematology takes it down to the microbial level. Let's see what's going on microbially that's actually the cause, you know, the cell. And, okay, so when the microbes leave the cell, they, like, literally kind of hold it together. They fatten it up. And because the microbes are in the cell, they're eating. So in a compost, what do microorganisms do? In a compost, the microorganisms are actually eating all the bad stuff up and turning it into uh, something else, right, called compost that you can use to fix the microbes in your soil. What else does this microbial compost do? It actually gets the soil to hold more water. Uh, Microbes are, I call it what I call a silent nutrient. Uh, they also, you know, have a relationship with sunshine and water, and all the plants have microorganisms in them, right? So the microorganism in soil really kind of dictates, you know, what's going to happen with your garden and your plants and, and, and is the basis of the real medicine that your plants are going to become, uh, and without it, you're not really getting a lot of live food or uh, microbial dense food that you need in order to fight every disease that there is. Exactly. So when the microbes, you know, for whatever reason, freak out 
and they leave the system, the cell collapses. And then that's when the cell starts to mutate. But usually first what you see is inflammation response. And so the red cells collapse because they're the ones that are mostly targeted. Um, and they're the ones that carry oxygen, water, uh, you know, help with transport of like stuff like vitamin D, sunlight response. Um, and so when it collapses, literally the cells in your body are no longer, your body's no longer retaining water. So no matter how much water you drink, you're going to be dehydrated. The red blood starts to thicken up. Uh, you can get blood clots uh, if it stays long enough. You are exhausted um, because the blood is moving so slowly. And it can coagulate into the, um, the arteries, which means that you can have a red blood cell stroke. And then usually people will call me and they'll say, well, I thought, you know, I had a, you know, a heart attack stroke or whatever but they when they opened me up they didn't find any um plaque you know in any of the arteries and it's like well because you had inflammation you had a red blood cell stroke so right. one is that 30 percent of all alzheimer patients are cardiac right which means that their blood pressure is up and down and so when you have high inflammation your brain is not getting the oxygen you need just like if you if you have high or low blood pressure it's inconsistent so inflammation also probably makes up you know a pretty good extent of why people have alzheimer's at this point so mm. the blood thickens up the cells collapse and they start sticking to each other and then they're no longer transporting nutrient um, they're no longer uh, transporting water they're no longer uh, transporting oxygen whoa that was a quick half hour all <laughs> right we'll be right back of Truth Jihad Radio. Federal prosecutors, Department of Homeland Security agents, and curious passersby often ask me, just what is this Truth Jihad thing anyway? Well, everybody knows what truth is, but jihad is a misunderstood term. Jihad means effort or struggle. The greater jihad is the struggle to be a better person, while the lesser jihad is the struggle to defend the community. Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, did say that the best jihad is a word of truth flung in the face of a tyrant. And that's what we do here at Truth Jihad Radio. Every Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, 5 to 7 Pacific, right here on Revolution Radio. often unprotected and preyed upon in the most horrific ways. Children who grow up to tell their stories. It is time for the world to listen. My name is Venny Koshis. I am a cult and child abuse survivor turned thriver. From religious abuse to abuses enacted in the youth reform system to abusive government funded programs and more, 
I am bringing you trauma survival stories which the mainstream media rarely covers. Support freedomslips.com and tune into my show, Survivor Voices, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. And remember, whatever you do to the least among you, you do unto yourselves. Find some comfort at Willow's World. A variety of news, commentary and poetry at Willow's Poetry Corner, where there are comfy cushions and a tempting selection of delectable comestibles. A show that's quirkily and quintessentially British, with a unique twist featuring Willow Andreessen, your host. Join Willow, Monday, 6 to 8 p.m. EST, Studio B. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... Well, welcome back to Adventures of a Feral Hippie here at freedomslips.com. Don't forget, we are listeners supported, so get the homepage and do us that favor. Go ahead, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I didn't have a question because you're on a roll and I think you are doing well. Thank you. Oh, good. Well, I want to tell people um, that they're. If you have like really high inflammation, um, we'll talk about what the major contributors are. I mean, age is a contributor of it um, and everything you've done to the point of age, um, that's usually the largest contributor. But there's also a lot of other contributors that are killing and damaging the microbes, you know, and causing inflammatory response. But um, I get told a lot that well, you didn't tell me what I could do, right? (laughs) So when you're having inflammation, which I think is like the number one cause of so many people's problems, uh, because they, I mean, literally, you can't get out of bed, you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. Um, And you really need to plump those bad boys up. But there's two products I really, really like that gives you a start. Is it going to fix you and isn't going to cure you, but it's going to give you a start. And um, the... uh, um, I like to get them from Da Vinci Laboratories, and one is called DMG, which is, I think they consider it like B15, oh. and it actually oxygenates all your cells. It's chewable. Okay, I want some, too. <laughs> yeah, it's chewable. I'd recommend people take like two or three a day, um, you know, uh, over the course of the day. Don't take them after like three o'clock, or you will not sleep all night, because you'll be really oxygenated. Um but uh, Russia scientists developed DMG, and they did it to help enhance performance of athletes. So it really helps your brain, it helps your body, it helps your blood, because it's, it kind of helps the cells to hold a little bit of oxygen. Because we have to kind of conjure the microbes to come back in the cells, you know, just like compost. One of my teachers in biodynamic farming said, you know, we, we make these above ground composts, and we put straw around them as they're an organism. And he said, we, we don't really want to add microbes to to it but what we want to do is we want to create like the proper state uh, in this compost that the microbes underground we're conjuring them up into the compost right right but we're we're working perfectly in accordance with nature and because we have so many things that are forcing the microbes out these days um, we were going to have to put microorganisms inside of our bodies and we're going to have to create an atmosphere where they want to come back into the cells or they start to replicate in the cells. Um, we have to provide like a really good home. So the other one is I really like that really helps a lot when people have a lot of um, inflammation or sluggishness is CoQ10. And I feel like... Uh, yeah, you for- can't do that one at night either. No, you'll be like, Ooh. That was but, our astronauts who found the QQ10. I've studied yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So um, anybody that uh, buys the stuff from Da Vinci, you just tell them to, you know, make sure and give me a kickback. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, would it work? I mean, come on, we're allowed. 
Yeah, so, um, but this will help to at least get you feeling better so that you can think and that the blood starts to get a little more oxygenated in the arterial blood mm -hmm. and it can at least start, it's a stepping stone. Um, the other thing too that, I mean, dealing with microbes and disease, because inflammatory dis is the disease that starts that causes every single disease there is because it, it, it uh, creates aging. So the other big thing that I tell people is that you really need to grow a compost uh, that's microbial rich that you can utilize for your whole yard and constantly, you know, as the compost comes up every three months, be out there spraying new microbes onto it because of the chemtrails and the radiation and, and all this other stuff is sterilizing everything so fast and so rapidly. And also make sure and eat a lot of probiotic like and vegetables. I don't do dairy, but they have a lot of um, if you can make your own kefir, uh, that's that's always a really good thing um, to get a starter for that to help with microbes. But you also need to have lots of different kinds of microbes. Um, and, you know, getting your hands out into the dirt and compost and stuff helps the microbes to go through your skin and stuff like that. And you start to communicate and have microbe relationship with the microbes. Um, and so making a compost and making your yard like a microbial rich environment for your children and the babies to wander through. So they're getting impacted uh, and into their bodies, these microbes, so that their cells can develop and be healthy. So Neat. things... Things that kick the microbes out or cause stress, um, smart meters, Wi-Fi, uh, computers, cell phones, uh, radiation, micro radiation, whether you're eating it or it's coming from your cell phone tower through your phone. I mean, it's the same kind of uh, radiation. Um, those are really hard exposures on the microbe as well as the uh, heavy metals and um, that are coming down with the chemtrails. And I, I suspect there's a lot of viruses also that are attacking the microbes in our system. Uh, these deadly flu viruses and stuff, you know, are released also. So yeah. what happens? So there's a, there's a, another side of um, inflammatory that a lot of people don't understand. So I just want to kind of go over that real quick. So when, when, when the microbes, if they're in the cell, they're in an organism. So they're eating stuff and then, you know, um, that when it's eaten and dissolved and remade, then the cell prospers from that. Just like if you make a compost and it's organism and you put it on your yard, you know, it's like, it's like a nutrient, right? So mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Um, and when the micro poopoos, you know, it's byproduct and everything, it stays in the cell and it's redigested and re remade. You know, it's a constant cycle, right? It's a circle of life. It's the hoop, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's a perfect symbiotic relationship, but it's contained, right? So once the microbes leave the cell, the number one thing that happens is we talked about the cell collapsing and all of that, but, um, the, they start to poop, right? And there's no holding place. There's no mm. organism that's mm -hmm. containing them and holding them. So they're running amok. They're, they're, now they're starting to break down the good stuff in the body, right? They're no longer just going after the bad stuff because now the program where they were contained to do this kind of work now has um, fallen apart. And so now the microbes can go, you know, like and attack the body or whatever else. But they also produce poo-poo, right? There's a byproduct. Everything produces a byproduct. And that byproduct is lactic acid. Mm. So, you know, people ha have high acid problems, right? And our bio suits are not in our left hemisphere, do not operate in a good uh, acid level. So, um, once the acid level happens, because there's so much, all the microbes have left the cell, you have heavy duty inflammatory disease. Um, now the microbes are, you know, poo-pooing all over your body, uh, poo-pooing out lactic acid. Now you're in an acid problem. The number one thing that your body does with your heart, if your heart goes a little too above a lot, the perfect alkaline for you, your heart will stop. If it goes acid, one even a little bit lower than the alkaline state that you need, your heart will stop, right? So your body's number one function all the time, 24 seven, is cooling the acid in the body because it's gotta keep that heart regulated and going. So what it does is it 
just like in, um, I tell people, just like in um, farming, when you have stuff that's too acid or you have soil that's too acid, um, you know, like a lot of foul poop, you know, especially chicken and stuff like that um, can be really acidy. What? You know, we'll use uh, like calcium or powdered lime calcium um, to cool it, right? So we're cooling it with cal- with like a calcium type molecule or product. So that is what happens in your body. So you get osteoporosis because um, you your body's acid is going up all the time that your body is, uses it as a state of emergency, pulls the calcium out of your bones or your muscle or wherever it can pull it, and then, you know, uses it to cool the system to get your blood more back into an alkaline state. So this is where you get osteo, you get a lot of bone spurs, you get, you know, even things like spongilitis. Um, these are all... Uh, byproducts of the microbes and having long-term inflammatory disease and being in a lot of acid um, state. Well, that's what fluoride does too. Yeah. I mean, all these things in our system are creating, you know, acid states or creating a left brain lateralization or, and are throwing us completely off energetically so that, you know, we can't use the basic inner energy hard drive in order to override the programs. So, Um, the best thing you can do is really start to work, you know, um, with the microbes that are, um, you know, around you and, and trying to get more of them in your personal environment. So Q10 and B13, you said? uh, DMG. DMG. And I think they consider it B13. B15 or something like that. But also mm-hmm. for you athletes, it's like it'll give you a supercharge and it's natural. <laughs> it, it just really oxygenates um, your system and, and really gets that uh, inflammation or that sluggish, you know, blood, uh, you know, a little bit thinner and moving. And it can help pump up those little red cells. Mm-hmm. Ginkgo does too. It gets all to the minuteness if you want to incorporate another ingredient that's beneficial yeah well the thing is is that these are this is the first stepping stone Mm -hmm. and the thing is is that you're going to have to fix your microbes you're going to have to get well you're going to have to get the microbes that have decided to run amok um you're going to have to coax them or conjure them back into the cell uh, and you may have to work, you know, with like a, um, a very alkaline, you know, pH diet, um, which there's no dairy, no meat, you know, um, and you want to stay away from cooked food <laughs> and fried food, uh, you know, in order to be really alkaline. And, you know, you've got to put that coffee down and most of those teas and things like that that produce acid. Just because our, our environment is 100% acid. And like, you know, um, one of my reptilian co- clients that I talked to before said that, you know, that's, there's so many of them and, and they have to have an acid state and, and, you know, they're, they're happy to live at places like Mars and stuff where it's such an acid state that nothing grows. Um, because that's, they're predominantly here. And so that's why you have fluoride. And then there's that other level where, well, they're using it as mind control. Well, you know, that's just how it pops out. Mm-hmm. Three but fluoride, percussions, yeah, yeah, but think about it. Fluoride's not fluoride in the water anymore. It's a gas. It's like a, a powdered gas that they're making that isn't really even like fluoride fluoride that they're right, putting in the water. Right, There's an organic natural fluoride, but not the fluoride that they're using. Right. So it's really creating a lot of acid in the water supply. So, mm-hmm. um, And the chlorine does too. And, you know, this is the other thing that I learned um, a few years ago. Um, so... Iodine, fluoride, uh, chlor or bromine, chlorine, they're all almost like the similar molecule. And so most of us don't eat enough iodine. And so our thyroid is just really wacko. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that our thyroid does is it actually, uh, I think it rotates all the blood through it every 17 minutes and clears out mold, fungus, mm. viruses. So most people's thyroid, I mean, I have more people calling me going, hey, I have Hashimoto's disease. And you're just like, wow, you know, like um, how long has your thyroid not been working like all your life? Um, 
But what happens is all these people, they go to these swimming pools, there's chlorine in your water and fluoride. And so since the thyroid really, really, really wants iodine, it will actually accept a a molecule that's similar to itself, which Mm -hmm. is fluoride, chlorine, or um, bromine. Uh, What else? There was like another one in there too. So the other thing too is for people to really take to help with sluggishness and weird thyroid stuff, uh, especially with all the radiation because thyroid going off the rails is radioactive. So um, most of it can be radiation, which is smart meters. You know, it doesn't have to, there doesn't have to be a giant nuclear fallout, people. Right. <laughs> For you to have radioactive cancers because you have a microwave oven that you're eating food out of. Um, you have smart meters, um, cell phone towers they're putting on playgrounds. They have been, um, you know, like all these things. So um, we're basically, you know, being destroyed from the inside out. So yeah. there are just a lot of... Um, health problems these days because there's so much of a a giant imbalance which is not the original operating system of the planet so when people ask me like do i believe in the galactic federation and all these people (laughs) i say no because my family star family does not talk about it they talk about it in the individual person you know gaining consciousness and um and getting to a point where you know the the they might be able to be helped or you might be able to figure out through practices how not to go through the tractor beam and the heaven experience. Oh, one one last thing that really, really, really gives me a rash, a rash so bad that, you know, I want to scream. But mm-hmm. there's all these um, people that are talking um, and some of them, you know, are probably going to be fine. But a lot of these people want, you know, these machines that heal people. Um, And they want, you know, all these people are channeling that the galactics, you know, have these machines (laughs) and chambers, you know, that they want to put us in. And, you know, it'll heal everything. You know, it'll give us like 400 more years of life. Well, let me just tell you, because it's in the mainstream, it means that it's from the dark side. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with the light. And you get in one of those chambers and you're gone. Bye-bye. You go to another planet where they harvest, you know, or they'll use your body as a meat suit on one of these other planets for some, a lot of these extraterrestrial eat people. That's why we're considered cattle. Um, And then what will happen is they'll harvest your, you know, ISB soul, whatever you want to particle from the no thing. Um, and they'll they'll take it in the electronic prison. You won't be able to get out, and then they'll ship you somewhere else so that they can utilize it to put you in some other kind of bio suit so that you can be in another slave race. Uh. So we have to really, like, critically think about this stuff. And, you know, there are some machines that are coming online, like the Rife machine, that can fix some types of DNA and whatever else. But the, this is the deal. How You have a responsibility of why your DNA is fucked up. Excuse me. That's in all the, right. <laughs> in the first place. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so what? Somebody helps you get over a disease with a machine, but you never change your life. So you it'll never, just come right back. It or worse, something else will will work. Because, yeah, exactly. Because your bio suit is like compost and soil. And this is the other thing too, is all these people are like, oh, hydroponics and we can cover them up so the chemtrails don't get to them and all this other stuff. It's like, well, what what kind of responsibility don't you have to fixing the soil? Let alone the water, if it's getting it, you ain't getting away with not getting those things. Yeah, and so you have mm-hmm. hydroponics that are plastic that release chemicals. I know, right? That turn men into females and give them boobs. Yeah. And and so you think hydroponics is the answer, and then you're using thin synthetic, uh, synthetic nutrients. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like I tell people, everything that it, the bio suit needs is biological. Right, organic a- nature. Yeah, you need a biological replacement um, nutrient for the body, which is going to be food. And the two top very important silent nutrients are microbes, microorganisms, and sunlight. Yeah, I wish we had more sunlight. So I get really, like, itched up about the whole, all those machines and all the stuff I see all over (laughs) about the machines. Right. Well, what do you think about the salt lamps? Hey, you know what? I I just don't think they're big enough. <laughs> I know, but I mean, just for the general environment, do you believe they're helpful? I do. <laughs> um, I actually went to uh, 
the other day I was looking at, I'm going to this infrared sauna place here in Reno, and they actually have a whole salt room that you can lay in. Yeah, they have them here too, salt caves they call them. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish I could do a cave. It would be way better. But anyway, she just has a room that was made, and I don't know how they stuck the salt to everything, but it's in her little center. And it was kind of interesting about how I felt, but I, I take a product also that's called Miracle Salt. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it is a bomb. Uh, and um, What color is it? It's like white. Um, there's a, an Asian guy who sells it. I think the he sells it on Amazon, but the um, I think it's uh, Creator Wellbeing is the website, Wellbeing Creator. And he sells the Miracle Salt on there. He was like an acupuncturist, but his master, you know, his teacher is in Asia at this place where the salt accumulates that's really corrosive when it comes out of the ocean or how it accumulates and they let it naturally refine for three years before they package it up and sell it. Well, I have an issue about getting salt from oceans between BP and Fukushima. This is, um, but it, this also has an energetic component of how they deal with it, right? It's a very spiritual process. But, you know, I'll have sinus stuff going on. Oh, I had uh, some periodontal, which is basically scurvy. It's a vitamin D or vitamin C deficiency. But, you know, I love how the dentist people call it, you know, periodontal when it's scurvy. Um, which Interesting. Is vitamin C mm-hmm. and because you know your teeth are connective tissue your gums so if you don't have enough vitamin C in your body your connective tissues start to dissolve that's what scurvy is mm. so if you have bleeding gums or anything like that you have scurvy so you need to take ton load and Mercola has one of the best vitamin C's on the market but anyway so the salt really started help to heal you know um, also my gums nice. but so I started noticing when I would take it in my mouth swish it around you know sterilize uh, all the bad bacteria in my mouth or whatever, and I swallow it. About an hour later, my sinuses would just totally drain, and like clumps of crap would come out. Oh, so and I was talking to this lady about the salt room, and she said that's the same thing. She said people, you know, they got an ear infection or they got clogged ears or whatever else, and a sinus infection, and they come in here, and like you know, within 20 minutes, the, their ears pop, they're draining, all the crud starts to come out. Nice. They cough up the crap. So. Yeah. You know, salt does have a very... Um, Necessary. A, mm-hmm. But good salt, not bad salt. Oh, we do pink salt. Yeah. But salt's important. Oh, um, yeah, vital. Yeah. And also, too, I want to tell people out there that, um, you know, the stuff that we're dealing with, vaccines and stuff, and the doctors and all this other stuff, it, it's really bad, but... It's worse in veterinarian offices now. Oh, well, and, and plus they, the vaccines are moving to humans. Go ahead. Yeah, so, but, you know, every time I go to a vet, you know, like, I really get threatened. And the only thing I give my dog is the heartworm because it's really the only really bad thing that I can't really help her from. You know, right. she gets it, and we travel a lot to different farms, and I, I just don't know. And, and so it's the only thing that I give her, you know, and she, when I got her, she was a rescue, so she had tons of vaccinations, but... Um, like, I have to fight with them, you know, over this kind of right, stuff. Right, because they want to inoculate when they're already inoculated. That's stupid. Exactly. And so it gives the animal cancer. You know, it, it, it really, well, like... long neurological problems, and it's going to have the hooks just like the humans. Exactly. So um, I always tell people, like, you know, don't be, you know, pushed into doing something um, that you, you know, don't feel are right, or you just don't have enough information on just because somebody shows up. I mean, look at this. Who's the authority, authority people of the Bible. This other thing that cracks me up. Who wrote the Bible? Man. Man. Okay. So who's the authority over the Bible? Basically the Catholic church. Who's the authority over your health care? and what kind of like, you know, uh, Bible that they study when they went to uh, school right. to become what they're going to be. Um, and they don't have all the information either. And the veterinarians are worse than doctors now because now they've moved them to be just like doctors. Any doctor that would offer you chemotherapy to your dog? They, I say- read an article yesterday that people were taking pre avoid cancer chemotherapy. I had the I best know. laugh out of that ever. Yeah, I mean, well, when they first, the first, yeah, I think the first animal that they ever treated with chemotherapy was this fish. 
this like $200,000 fish that got a tumor on it. And then ever since then, you know, they've been, uh, it was somebody's prized pet. And then ever since then, they offer that kind of stuff in treatment. But, you know, veterinarians these days, see, back in the old days, you would apprentice to be a doctor, mostly. You would apprentice to be a veterinarian. And you would be, you would go towards those trades because of something in you, right? Um, And so you were that, you were, you had that potential to start out the gate, right? You had the potential to work with animals and understand them and know what's going on with them. Or you had the potential to work with people and illnesses or babies or, you know, whatever else it's going to be. You know, when you go to these schools and get these certifications, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a sense. Right. About it. Right? It's common not sense, yeah. innate in you to do that work. Exactly. It's really important for you to for it to be already there in you. So, um, but I tell people they're killing animals just as fast as they're killing people right now because of all the treatment that they're using um, on the animals. And, you know, like if your animal is sick or has any kind of issues, um, you can go down. If you guys, if anybody has recreational marijuana, we just got it finally in a state that was zero tolerance, a seed you could go to jail for 25 years. We finally got it. But I go down to the canna store now and I just get, you know, like THC oil times two CBDs. And I give my dog that, you know, two or three drops on her food every night. She's had a little tumor in her belly. It's gone now. And she has one coming out of her head. So it's dislodging another one. Well, the kitty has um, some epileptic seizures and we gave him can of butter. He's feeling so much better now. All right, can of butter. <laughs> oh, honey, I, I don't want to go that. there right now because, you know. <laughs> I know. Well, I like that because. Well, we I got was... one more minute. So if you want to give your um, site out again, et cetera. Yeah. It's um, coe-llc.com, and it had collapsed. And so uh, there's the only thing I've got on it right now is a contact form. Um, if you want to contact me or whatever else, you can find me at Bridget Lynn Dolgoff on Facebook. Um, and uh, I hope that our conversation today was really helpful for a lot of people. Oh, and it was. I want to thank you so very, very much. We'll do it again and tell everybody later. Later. Thank you, Mona. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at FreedomSlips.com. Any commercial advertising you may hear in this program is of the sole discretion and benefit of the host of whose program you are listening to. Revolution Radio does not endorse any commercial products, nor does it accept monetary compensation for on-air advertising of commercial products, nor will it ever. We are and shall remain 100% listener supported. Any product advertising on this program are considered used at higher risk, and Revolution Radio shall not be held liable for any claims or damages received from any product advertised within this program. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Hello? Moscow's freeze. That's your cerebral cortex looking for an answer it doesn't have. See? Even your brain knows you're screwed. The blood is filling with adrenaline right now. Whether you know it or not, the heart's beating fast. It's getting a little harder to breathe. The neurobiological system is telling it to run. But your knees are too weak to move. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination. 
causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. That is near insanity. And do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. We are all telling ourselves a story. You're listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. 100% listener-supported radio. Reporting to danger. Unafraid. Right here, where information never sleeps. Revolution. Revolution. Radio. Radio. data safe? Do you have the necessary information to assist you in confidently living through just about any survival situation? Is survival and gardening, off-grid living, medical knowledge, or even natural or man-made EMPs on your list of personal concerns? Do you have your documents and your personal information in a safe place in your hands where you know where it is? Well, check out our preloaded EMP-proof thumb drive. Over three gigs of survival documents and how-to. 